Welcome back friends to the shop. In today's video, I've got a little arts and crafts for you. I'm going to show you how to wrap any of your Kydex holsters with that super cool Safari Land 500 Denira Multicam Cordura. I guess the obvious question is why would you want to do <laughs> to, to do this in the first place? And I've thought long and hard about this and the only thing I can come up with is it looks really, really cool. <laughs> I, I don't know, maybe there's some argument to be made that it's gonna be quieter, uh, but it is a beautiful and super cool finish and very easy to do. Uh, you can do this on your holster for about, about $2, maybe two or $3 uh, with all of the material. So what we have here is uh, one that I, I just finished up here. These are both T-Rex Ragnaroks. Uh, this is for a G19 with an X400. This one set up, of course, for night vision, and this one is just a regular G19 for an X300. So they take different lights, and since the retention is on the light, you have to have individual holsters. These, if you haven't seen them before, are just probably about the coolest way to do holsters because you can buy, uh, get set up on, on your belt, you know, your battle belt or whatever you, you want to use. This is a Ronin here with a Safari Land uh, fork and receiver. And then when you want to change holsters, you just simply snap them in right here. So it is, uh, it's an awesome, awesome system. All right, so let's get started with the material and we'll go through the whole process. I think you'll enjoy this. It's really fun and easy to do. It's something anyone can do with any Kydex holster. Materials you'll need to do a holster wrap uh, is some really good high quality glue. Our friends over at, at Mercury Adhesive, if you want the very best super glue, oh man, it's awesome. They have different thicknesses. They have some with flex in it, but just use whatever you have. You don't have to get super fancy with it. You want some 3M Super 77. That is a spray adhesive that once you have it, you'll use it on everything you can find around the house. It's so handy. Some Ipro, Ipro, can I read this? Isopropyl alcohol uh, to do the prep work for our holster to clean it. And then of course, some 500 Denira. Now the 500 is the perfect thickness. Don't go with a thicker thousand or less, that seems to be just right. There's a little bit of stretch in it and you can get all around all of those nooks and crannies you're gonna have on those Kydex. Before we do anything, we'll take off all of the hardware, all of your screws and such. You wanna have that, uh, those screws to go in afterwards. You'll also want, if you have a little soldering iron, that works pretty good for burning the holes through where the screws will go when we're all done. If you don't have that, you can just take a punch or a little ice pick and heat it up with a torch and poke it through there. I'll put links to all this stuff as well as the holsters if it's something you're interested in the subject heading. I have boxes of holsters having been kind of a CCW since I was almost in my teens and I can tell you they make some very nice, very nice holsters those guys over there. The isopropyl alcohol is my favorite thing to clean parts with. This is the same stuff they put in the small, little small spray bottles you get from your optometrist for cleaning glasses. Uh, the benefit of it is it, uh, it, it's super clean. It doesn't leave any residue and it all evaporates away. And it's usually pretty mild. You guys should probably wear gloves on it, but it's pretty mild on, on uh, stuff. You know, you try to use brake cleaner or something real caustic on some of this stuff. It can melt the plastic. And I've never had isopropyl alcohol ever do any damage to anything. Looks pretty clean. All right, well that's drying off there. Well, uh, I guess we could start cutting our fabric. I don't know where you can buy a small piece of Cordura. I think you can only buy it at a like minimum of a yard, which is a three foot by three foot piece, which is gonna cost you about 20 bucks. But out of that, you probably get, depending on your holster, between six and 12 holsters you could wrap with it. So it goes a long ways. There's gonna be a front and a back, and the back has a backing on it, which will take that glue really well. All I did is I used a closet pole to jam in there, just find a piece of stick or something so you don't have to touch it, and that you could something that you can clamp in the vise so you can work with two hands. And all I did is, is when you, we apply it, we'll wanna make sure we'll, we apply it on the face and then wrap around and have the seam on the back where it's gonna be held in place by the fork and, and you're not going to see it. So you have a nice clean seamless front on it. 3M Super 77 is just a spray adhesive. Shake it up. I put it by the wood stove, make sure it's not too cold and warm. Now I six to eight inches away. Huh? Make sure you're doing it on the back side of it. But I found that uh, more <laughs> is good with this. I went too dry the first time and 
we'll let that sit for a few seconds, but you, it'll give you the ability to work with it pretty good. Okay, let's take this over to the vise and then we'll start our wrap. You, I'm just using an old piece of closet pole and this guy here because it, it just gave me some ability to kind of free up my, my hands. Don't forget to, you know, I guess I should have mentioned this when you're cutting it, you know, orient the way you want your pattern. I don't know if it makes any difference to you or not. But um, I kind of just figured I wanted the, when this went on, I want it to the seam to come around to the back. But it doesn't matter so much because we're just going to do a slice down there. But just kind of center it on here on the top. I noticed that if you, if you use a lot of glue, it seems to give you a little bit of extra time to work the material. And, you know, don't discount your fingers. Fingers work really good for pressing all of those little grooves and cracks out. you got a little bit of forgiveness. You can stretch a little bit of stuff there. But once I get it kind of where I want it, I'll work in where I can't get enough strength or push or press on my fingers with that tip of that Sharpie. And I run just about every inch of this around. And the closet pull deal works good because you can rotate the holster as you need to. Overcutting, it's really important. You can see, like as we wrapped, you can see how we are misaligned there. If you cut that too tight, you know, you'll, you'll find that you'll run out of material. Ask me how I know. Once you get it placed, go back to the front. And one last time, just find your edges and just go over every, every single bit of it using that Sharpie to press those grooves in. Okay, it looks pretty good. So we'll go to, I went to the back side here where, the, where it's not gonna show and I just kind of estimate where the middle is and we are gonna cut through both layers. Make sure you have a really sharp, brand new razor blade. It seemed to work best for me to kind of re-clamp this at about a 45 degree angle or so, wherever you can work comfortably. And then we'll start cutting down to the top of the holster, to the edge of the kydex. Just hold your razor blade at kind of a parallel to the bottom. And if you have a good razor blade, it'll just, you can just push it right through there. Well, I've got to say that that turned out pretty good of just going through and just pressing down everything, especially the edges, making sure I don't have any bubbles. But that looks pretty good. The stuff is actually pretty forgiving. If you use a heavy set of glue on there, it, it does remain flexible and it gives you a little time to press all that stuff in and make a few mistakes. But there's the back side where we cut the seam. That will all be hidden by that fork, but the front side's what matters nice and trim. So the only thing that we have left to do is we'll seal around the edges with the super glue and then we'll reassemble it. The super glue is going to kind of bind that, those edges, those raw edges and keep them from fraying. I guess you could probably burn it. Just be careful. You don't uh, damage your holster or burn your fabric. This seems to work really good here. Just go on there and now grab a, ru ru a rubber glove and then just, I found, you know, this stuff sets up, it's not super fast, so and you could just about do the whole thing at one time and then get that rubber glove on and then take it and just clean off the excess. And just work that glue in to the edge of the frayed edge of that Cordura 
and that'll seal it up nicely. We've covered up all of the mounting screw holes with the fabric, so I'll use the soldering iron here just to burn those through those real quickly, and that will seal those holes up so they won't fray. If you're worried about making a mistake, just take your, whatever it is you're putting on there and you can take a Sharpie and mark those holes. Don't forget to Loctite. You want 243, the blue Loctite. For this stuff, when this is these things move around, and holsters are notorious for throwing screws. My old holsters that I've had for a long time are full of all sorts of mismatched screws from over the years from having to replace them. They're hard to find, you know. There's just so many different combinations. Well, friends, there you have it. What do you think? Let me know in the comments what you think. I, I, I like it. <laughs> I think the, having the pattern run up and down looks better than if I would have went sideways there. I'm uh, actually really surprised that I got some continuity there. It was just by sheer dumb luck. You know, see, even a professional homeowner gets luck, lucky once in a while. Of course, don't forget to function test. Make sure everything is, what? No, no that's the 400. Make sure everything works properly. We don't see any conflicts or any problems. Looks good on the back side. The hardware really, but that, that's, that's just cool. Is it quieter? It might be. It might be, it definitely looks cooler. <laughs> and that's what, that's half the battle anyway, right? Yep, very, very happy with that. That turned out nice. Well, thanks for watching everyone. I really appreciate it. Uh, one thing I wanted to mention before we go, uh, had, I've had some folks that have been kind of curious, well, mostly complaining about not liking the ads that I've been doing or running an ad like we're doing for Simply Safe and, um, oh, so I forget, nothing comes to mind right now, some of the other companies. That's the direction that I'm, I'm trying to move in so that we can get away from the YouTube ads, which I have no control over. A lot of those YouTube ads, and I don't see them. You guys see them and you tell me that are, some of them are just inappropriate and, and really not for up, you know, not really what we stand for. Uh, and so my ultimate, the goal is for me to just to get my own advertising. That's what I'm trying to do. I will not, not run ads on videos, YouTube ads on videos that we do a, that a, a sponsored ad like Simply Safe. You'll get, uh, I'll mention it right at the beginning that's going to be in there. I'll drop between a 60 and a 90 second ad right in the middle of the video and that will be it. You don't have to deal with anything else. So I think most people prefer that. I know I do rather than having just random ad after ad that I don't have any control over running through the videos. And so that's gonna be the kind of direction that I wanna move in. I'll do a few sponsored videos uh, for things that I really like and some, comp some good companies that I'm putting together relationships with in the future. Um, and ultimately the goal will be to get away from those mid roll or those, those full YouTube ads um, uh, if possible. We'll see, but that is the plan. Thanks for watching. May God bless you and your families. Please keep us in your prayers and we'll see you all on the next video.